the soccer team in mind. I think that's important because all these other stadiums were built with for only one tenant, I feel yeah, like. Sure. Uh Century Link, uh all these other teams, I feel like they're made just for one one tenant. But you have Atlanta, you have their own locker room. The turf isn't bad. The field's pretty nice. The capacity is perfect. I mean, it it, it, it makes sense, I think, for Atlanta in at least because they were they were it was built for them in mind. Yeah, and which is it's really hard to argue when you're Ford and you want to put the money down, or you're Detroit and you got the you know Ford and all these exactly. investors. And that's the thing. How are that's you? The thing. No, it, it's it's a weird balance. Yeah, so I, how are you gonna? How is MLS gonna say? Look, we're not we don't we don't want you in here because you're playing a football stadium. Yeah. All the tourists do is be like, if we did a stand against Atlanta, would you complain? Yeah, well, I know Seattle Sounders, Seattle Seahawks, Century Link. That's on turf. That I, I has it worked? I don't know. You, you Seattle had to play their playoff game Thursday night. So I think it's worked to a degree. Yeah, but to a degree. It works. Well, the thing is, it's it's one. It's only it only works if the clean team is successful, right? Because it sells right, out. Yeah, you get money. But if the team like the Revs. Who, by the way, will have thirty-two thousand show up in a playoff game? Like they will, they. I don't think Gillette opens everything up, but they will. They fill that lower bowl up quite well. Like the the Revs in Boston's a real sports town, so they will get people to go out when the Revs, for example, thirty thirty-two some thousand showed up against the Red Bulls in two thousand and I think fifteen when uh no fourteen twenty fourteen for the conference uh, f- final. Eastern Conference Final, Red Bulls, New England Rev, Revolution. 32,000 showed up. So if you're successful, yeah. I think, I was, just, I think it was 25. Yeah, 24. I think it was. 14. Was it, you were at 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my bad, my bad. <laughs> I know my Rev. But, um, but you're, you're right. No, you're spot on. If it's if it's successful, I the team on the field. If not, it looks bad. Um, I want to hear your thoughts on Portland because they don't really even ground share, but they kind of do, but they kind of don't. But – no, that's the reason why they don't have grass. Okay, that, that's my biggest issue. It's not. It's on turf. If it, if Portland Providence Park wants to actually expand another four thousand, expand or get rid of that stupid and ugly turf and put some grass down. Explain, Armand. Explain why, or one of the real reasons why they have turf and not grass. Because uh, they share with Portland State, the football team and, that went zero and ten this year, and they. And as, according to a tweet I read, they attract around – they – throughout the whole season, overall, they had – overall, they had 20,000 uh, overall. Overall, like the, the the sum. Like not like average, like 20,000 in five games. So about 4,000 per game. Stupid. So this is dumb. And – yeah, it's just it's 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 interesting. But to your point, you don't think Detroit should be in consideration anymore? Nope. I would tell Detroit you build a stadium. I mean, they this stadium project would basically go into the development where an old jail sits. They would renovate the area. They get a gorgeous twenty three thousand seat uh, stadium, which I would think. And economically, it make it makes sense for a city to be to be like, okay, this is a jail. It's not really giving us much revenue. It's costing us more to run the jail. Let's get a stadium going, get the urban development around there, and you know, get some a little bit of boost to the economy in, in Detroit, which has been struggling recently. To be honest with you, yeah. And F- Ford Field, it's home with the Detroit Lions. It's not meant for soccer. Uh, for soccer, it's just not. And if they're gonna play on turf, then what type of issues are you gonna run into? It just the the only way that I would MLS if if MLS is like fine, you have to have you have to have grass. That's the only caveat. To and that this. won't happen. And it, that's not gonna happen. They put in a dome. Yeah, and ex- expensive. Happen. But it's it's not that hard to maintain grass. It really isn't. Go ask the the English clubs. How hard it is. They can feed you some. They could send you some good grass seeds, and you could figure it out. Science takes care of that quite well. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just annoying. But yeah, MLS should not consider Detroit, not whatsoever. Just don't. You want to play at Ford Stadium? Okay. Well, uh, let's look at Phoenix. Hey, Phoenix, how you doing? Or Charlotte, or Nashville. Which... Well, Nashville is going to be a team. So Nashville is going to be a team. Yes. 
Um, speaking of other latest news, Brad Friedel was hired by the New England Revolution. Armand, we're going to spend a quick 30 seconds here. Do you like the bad, hire? Bad hire. Why? It not not ambitious guy. Very very little experience. I feel like he was just he was just hired because he has a weird British Boston accent or whatever the <laughs> hell that is. <laughs> a weird British Boston accent. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, we'll see. We'll see. I I have no comment on it. I mean, he's never oh, coached. Wow. Wow. Way to abstain. Sounds like a real politician right there. No oh, politician. Yeah. Well. We'll see what uh, Donald. Can I, Lon- can I get to my uh, other hot take real point? All right, real hurry quick. up. Okay, fine. Running out of time here. Opening segment. Follow us on Twitter, Unc Sam Soccer Pod listeners. Let us know what I you think. Th- I think the the people, the logic that people use for the Save the Crew movement uh, to why Columbus has struggled in numbers is it's almost used against other teams in the same way. If that makes any sense. Um Many people are saying, you know, Columbus has bad marketing, this, that, but they'd be so much better. And then they point to Dallas and say, look at them. They get no attendance. They should be moved. Which, by the way, uh, if you want to know if Dallas will be moved, you know, MLS would force MLS would force Dan Hunt to sell a team before they'd move out of the Dallas market. But do you understand what I'm saying when I, when I, when I say that, Stephen? Like, when that logic is being used against other teams but for other teams it doesn't it doesn't make sense and i feel like this thing has only made enemies out of teams in the league good i like it i like rivalries i like it oh, God. that's what you need in this league a little more hate you need a little more hate among clubs it's too yeah but for business decisions well i mean look at the nfl right now who hates who in the nfl uh jerry jones versus goodell versus some other owners craft but i mean but i mean that's not on the field yeah, well, on the, all... on the field, it's great. <laughs> Everyone's God, getting I mean, CT. I want <laughs> – no. But if you have more hate on the field, the product of the game would be better. Just well, so. yeah, obviously. I mean, you, you've seen the, the rivalries. I mean, you see LAFC coming in with the Galaxy. I mean, we're going to see yeah, what's going to happen. Gal- there. Galaxy seems soft anyway. Who but we're going to see what's going to happen. Well, yeah, we'll see. And then if Austin uh, – Austin Villa, if they get a team um, – That'd be great. Uh, Dallas, Houston, Lone Star, uh, Lone Star Cup. rivalry, Lone Star Cup, however you want to put it, Castadia Cup. What do you think of Cali? Is it going to be Cali Ca- Classico still, or what are they going to call it? The LA Derby? Fight for LA, something really dumb, I feel like. LA but, Derby, you know. just keep it classy. Keep it classy, MLS. That's your goal. All right, we'll be back with some U.S. men's national team talk. Yeah. Well, we're gonna see a glimpse of the future, Stephen. We're gonna we're gonna see it on Tuesday. Are we? Uh, national team. Switzerland's is lifting Portugal. the World Cup. Is that the the future I'm seeing? Dude, if, if all I'm gonna hear is the Switzerland like <laughs> just praise, I'm gonna have to cancel the pod. But um, uh, we're gonna hey, see you... a glimpse of the future. We're gonna see the national team play against Portugal, uh, in Lisbon. Minus Ronaldo. Uh, let's let's be clear. Minus Ronaldo. Yeah, just I mean, had a daughter. Congratulations. Congratulations, Cristiano. Hopefully, get you in the pod one day. Yes, we will. Um, uh, you can come on the show anytime. Anytime, we'll make time for you. Yeah, absolutely. But um, you had an interesting take uh, while we we're talking about this privately. Saying <laughs> that this game doesn't matter. This game is useless. It's pointless. What good does it do? These players are going back to their clubs. Some of them are going to vacation. Nothing means nothing. This game is meaningless. Absolutely meaningless for these players. You're, the only good thing comes is you're, you're, some of these players who will have the dual citizenship, they become uh, cap tied to the U.S. That's good for them. You get the experience, blah, blah, blah. But other than that, you're not going to see a future out of this team. You won't. You're not going to see how they mesh well. You're not going to see anything. You just won't because we're still four and a half years out the next World Cup. Who knows who is coming behind them? Think about Christian Pulisic and how much he's changed in a span of fourteen to fifteen months. A lot, a lot. So 
I, I'm not telling you. Who knows? There could, one of these kids could be the next Christian Pulisic. And crazy thing is Christian Pulisic is only 19. So the, the fact that we're you know saying the next Christian Pulisic shows you how good Christian Pulisic is. But what are we going to get out of this game? If they score 12 goals past Portugal, what's that mean? What if they get killed by Portugal? What's that mean? I, 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 I honestly, I'm just excited to see some of these players uh, actually get a chance to play for a national team. Um, I can tell you a list of players I'm not excited to see, but some I am excited to see. Um, we're going to go position by position. Uh, I'm going to say a player, and or I'm going to go through the players, and I want you to tell me who you're going to be excited to see. Not that the game is meaningless, but you want to see some players, right? So like, Yeah, no, sure. You want to see it's exciting? Okay. So goalkeepers, Jesse Gonzalez, FC Dallas, Bill Hamid, I, I can't say that team, but that team in Denmark, and Ethan Horfath from uh, Club Bruch. Who Horthath. are you excited to see? I see. I've seen Jesse Gonzalez play quite a bit. So, eh. Uh, Hamid, eh, or half. Definitely exciting to see him play. I think he's the it's future. Gonna be ex- I think it's going to be exciting on the flip side to see Bill Hamid play with his newly pin move to Denmark. How is he going to perform? He's got a little bit more motivation. He's probably going to starting not, I feel like. So, well, well, who knows? I mean, it's I, not like you're going to be able to sub out the goalkeeper halfway through the game. So, <laughs> I mean, if I don't get to see my player, I'm disappointed. <laughs> So defender-wise, we're looking at John Brooks, uh, Cameron Carter-Vickers, Eric Lehigh, Matt Miazga, Tim Ream, Jorge Villafania, and DeAndre Yedlin. I know. I have a feeling I know who you're going to be excited about. Um, I want the right. young. I want the youngest players out there. Literally, I would just do this by age. Who's the youngest here? All right, you get the starting nod. That's how I do it this game. Just that's to, impressive. That's what I would do. Now Miazga and. Uh, Either with Brooks to see if you can, you know, have this f- immediate future with those two, or you throw in um, Carter Rickers, but he, I, I just don't know how they're gonna mesh. I mean, th- this is very, very new waters for these guys. Miaska with some more experience with the national team. Yedlin, obviously. Um, I'm just, I'm just, hard time with the left back position, Armand. I just don't know. You've, you know, you had the ageless. Uh, the Marcus Beasley always on that side. So who's gonna? You know, are we gonna see Beasley in four and a half years too? Because we're not gonna develop a player out there on the left side. I mean, I can't believe we haven't been able to do that in the last four years. No, I agree. And looking at this, looking at this roster right now, I mean, I feel like it's much more situated for a three back line than anything. I mean, I feel like so we're he, gonna see. Whole- sorry to interrupt, but how? Here's another issue I have. You have a head coach who has no idea if he's going to stay on or not. You might have a brand new guy. You might hell, you might have Sam Allardyce come in and he wants to play five at the back. Completely change everything. Or you get Oscar Pereira who maybe wants to play three at the back. None of these players have no idea what their roles are in this men's national team. They don't. Nobody has like, okay, besides for Christian Pulisic, Number 10, that's his role. Besides that, nobody knows if they're going to be on this squad in six months, in two years' time. That is an issue. I can't believe we don't have a head coach. The head coach is meaningless too. This is a tell you, meaningless game. To counter your head coach argument, wouldn't you think it'd be smarter to wait until after the World yes. Cup to see who has yeah. contracts and who doesn't? Well, although, okay, World although, Cup? The World Cup? I thought you were going to say U.S. presidency. No, I'm saying well, after presidency, they're hired. After a World Cup, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, nations don't retain their coaches. There could be a quality manager like who, out there me, internationally. Give Just give me some names. I don't know. Men, I don't know many off the top of my head. Well, but, that's the point. They're kind of dude. I'm, well, internationally, well, do coaches really have an effect? Yes. You think so? Look at Iran. That's like a, I'll give you. That's a prime example for me. They're a well-organized, well-trained team that they used to play like they were Brazil and like just open, <laughs> free-flowing, and we get destroyed. Uh, Carlos Quiroz came in and said, "No, we're playing organized, defensive football. We're gonna we're gonna absorb pressure, hit them on the counter, but we're gonna focus on defense. We're gonna Good. drill you yes. tactically, and yep. that's yep. what yep. that it does yep. make a difference. I think it does make a difference. I would." I wouldn't be surprised if U.S. contacted Juan Carlos Osorio, even though people do not want him, the Mexican manager. He has success with Mexico. That team was really well, doing really well in qualifying. So I do think managers do have an impact. I want um, I want a guy with emotion, man. I want somebody on that sideline who's going to scream and shout to, I don't know, just breathe a little bit on, these, on the players' necks, get them a little bit nervous. I mean, for example, using my Swiss team, 
There's always a young guy. The Switchlands.